Hello and welcome to Speaking Week and the very first session of a whole week dedicated just to speaking. Today we are focusing specifically on pharmacists and dentists and we're streaming live to both at official OET Facebook and our YouTube pages. So hello to everyone joining us there. I can see a good number of you coming in live now. So welcome. It's great to see you. And as I said, we really love hosting Speaking Week uh, with dedicated sessions um, for each of our 12 OET professions. So if today's session doesn't match up to your profession, check out which date is specifically for you on the screen now. Having said that, there will be plenty of tips in today's session which can be applied to your profession too. So feel free to stick around and listen in. All of these sessions are also going to be available as videos after we finish the live stream. So you can easily catch up on anything you've missed or you just want to watch again. So in today's session, to let you know what to expect, we're going to be looking at a brand new OET roll card for each of those professions that we're focusing on today. So there'll be one for pharmacy and one for dentistry. And we're going to listen to some actual candidates completing that role play as practice for their test. And it's also going to get quite interactive as I'm going to regularly ask you to give your opinions and comments to questions about those uh, role plays. And um, there hopefully will be time for some Q&A towards the end. And my colleague Alex is quietly behind the scenes manning the chat. So if you have comments or questions coming through uh, and they're not exactly related to the content we're talking about right now, Alex will be there to help you with those questions. And we'll hopefully have time, as I say, for specific um, questions about the session at the end of uh, the time today. But let's get started. Um, and as I said, it's going to be quite interactive. So I want you to answer this question into chat just to make sure we're all getting warmed up. Let me know in your speaking test, how many role plays do you have to complete? It's a really easy question. I'm going to tell you the answer is either one or two. So comment either on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're joining us live, how many role plays do you complete during your OET speaking test? Is it one or is it two? Let me know in the comment box um, so I can check everybody's warmed up and ready to take part in today's session. So that's good. I can see um, a few answers coming through. Aranya, uh, Mudassir and Kwan Kamal all saying two role plays. That is the correct answer. Alberta also coming through there as well. You're absolutely right. It is two role plays that you complete in your speaking test. And so good, now we're all warmed up. Let's get started on the speaking week session. And we're going to start by focusing on pharmacy and then I will move into dentistry. But as I said earlier, if you're not one of those professions today, don't worry, please do stick around because regardless of your profession, the candidate samples we're going to hear today provide interesting examples for everyone and the tips are universal for every OET profession. So I can guarantee there's going to be something interesting and useful for you if you're available to stay for a bit longer. So on the screen now is a new roll card for pharmacy, a brand new roll card. And uh, we're popping into the chat now uh, the link so that you can download your own version of the card. Uh, it might be a little bit small for you to read on the screen uh, as I'm showing it to you. So if you want to download your own version, the link's there in the chat now. And um, if you do download it, I'm going to be focusing with you on the candidate card. Um, of course, that's all you get to see in your speaking test. So if you've got your own version downloaded now from the link, uh, please also focus on the uh, pharmacy uh, candidate card um, as well for now. All of the cards, and there's going to be one for each profession as we go through the sessions covering all of the professions during the week. 
Um, these cards will be added to the OET website um, early next week once we've completed speaking week. Um, so do look out for those, but during the sessions, we'll also give you the link for you to download your own copy. So here's another question for you. Before both role plays in your test, you're given three minutes to prepare. And I want you to tell me in the comment box uh, something that you do, maybe three things that you do during this time. There's lots of very good ideas, uh, very good suggestions that you could make. Uh, but what are you doing when you're preparing, um, maybe with a friend or colleague or even with a teacher? What are the things that you do during those three minutes of preparation time um, so that you're making best use of that time? Uh, obviously, you're going to read through the card, but let me know if you take notes, uh, if you underline anything in particular. What are you doing in that three minutes preparation time? Let me know in the chat. You can see we've still got a few people getting settled into the session, checking when their profession is going to show up. But uh, great, here's uh, a suggestion from Helen, who is saying that she underlines the task verbs. That's a really good uh, suggestion. Uh, Vian has a similar idea underlining keywords. Absolutely, that's a good idea as well. And I'm going to talk in a second about uh, those verbs and keywords as well. Let's just give another 10 or 20 seconds to see if anyone else has got a suggestion. Yep, here we go from Quan Kamol, who's saying the function verbs like Helen, but also thinking about how to start the conversation and the language uh, to use. Absolutely, and they're covering quite a few of the things that I would suggest as well. So first of all, uh, the first thing that you should do is pay attention to the setting at the top of the card. This is a small piece of information, but it is significant because it tells you how serious or routine the situation is whether the patient is visiting you at work, which of course for a pharmacist is most common, or perhaps they are admitted to hospital or in an aged care home and you're visiting them there. The setting can even tell you something about the age of your patient. For example, if it says children's ward or aged care home, it will give you an indication of how old the patient is. Now you won't need to say anything about the setting in your role play, but paying attention to it is an important tool to help you start visualizing the conversation that you are about to have. And in this card, the setting is a community pharmacy, which tells us that this is likely to be quite a standard routine conversation with a client. The second thing uh, that you need to focus on is the background information. And this will always give you details of the patient's age, and the healthcare reason for the conversation, but it will never tell you the patient's gender or name. And there is an important reason for this. All OET tasks are written to be genderless, and your patient will simply be the gender of your interlocutor on test day. Um, the background information will also tell you if you are speaking to the patient themselves or to a relative of the patient. And if it's the latter, um, understand that the information in, in the card will also mention that the patient isn't present for the conversation. So if you're speaking to the mother of a child patient, a patient that's sort of two or three, uh, it will mention in the background information that the child is not present for the conversation. So it's always really clear that it's just you and the interlocutor speaking. You don't need to pretend that there's someone else in the room with you. So for this card, the background information tells us that your client is 47 years old and that he or she has come to speak to you about bad breath. And the card suggests that this is your first meeting with the patient, so you would need to introduce yourself to them. 
Finally, the tasks are given in a bullet point list. And the purpose of these tasks being given to you is so that you have plenty to speak about during the five minutes of your role play. You aren't assessed on completing all of the tasks, but the success of your communication with the interlocutor. And there are some key things you need to focus on in your preparation time, which some of the suggestions coming through from you in the chat uh, were suggesting. So first of all, um, as a couple of you mentioned, the verbs. These tell you the function of your communication for each section of the role play, whether you are giving or gathering information, whether you are providing advice or reassurance, whether you are emphasizing some particular um, line of um, recommendation that the, the patient needs to follow. Also pay attention to information given in brackets. This information is there to help you. Sometimes it will give you examples you can use with the patient or directions of how to complete the task. The other thing that I would recommend is thinking about the timing. Although no specific time limits are given for each task, you can work out from quickly reading each one, whether it's something routine that can be covered quite quickly or something complex or potentially emotive for the patient, which will take longer to discuss. And the tasks on this card show a balance of gathering information by asking questions and giving straightforward information such as recommendations, as well as managing the patient's request for treatment. And for each task, there are some ideas in brackets that you can build into your conversation. But remember, there is an expectation that you don't just read the examples out as a list. You need to expand them into complete ideas. So a couple of final things to remember about your role card and preparation time. So you are allowed to ask the interlocutor to define or pronounce a word you are not familiar with during your preparation time. And doing so will help you feel more comfortable that you have understood the task and are able to communicate accurately with your patient, the interlocutor. So looking at this card for pharmacy, are there any words on this card that you would want to ask to be defined or pronounced during the uh, preparation time? Or do you feel comfortable with everything written there? Let me know in the chat. Um, is there anything, perhaps name the word, if there's a word you would like defined or pronounced, or just say it's very clear. Just give you a few seconds to have a look over the card. Let me know if there's anything uh, you would like defined or pronounced. Imagining that you were sitting in your test, this is your preparation time. Is there anything you would want to ask the interlocutor? I'm not getting anything coming through, so that's absolutely fine. Perhaps everything that you can see on the card is clear. The only word I think perhaps some pharmacists might like uh, help with is halitosis, uh, which I've highlighted on the card. It's the reason for uh, the, the patient's visit. But I think all other words on the card would be familiar uh, for you in understanding and pronunciation. At the same time, another thing for you to think about in your preparation time is to consider if there are any words on the card that would be unfamiliar for the patient, given the context of the conversation. So, for example, if the patient is being newly diagnosed, you would expect them to be not familiar with medical terms associated with the condition. And you would need to decide how to introduce these terms or completely omit them in favor of something more appropriately layman in terms. So anything that you can see on the card that you think you would avoid um, because the patient might not be familiar with it. Just give you a few seconds again in the chats. Um, 
if you can identify anything that you think would be a bit too technical for the patient in this role play. Doesn't matter if you're not a pharmacist, this applies to any of our role cards. Uh, you may find words and terms given on your card that are very familiar to you, uh, but are a bit too technical uh, for the patient. So even if you're not a pharmacist, if you're a dentist joining for later on when we cover dentistry, or if you're a completely different OET profession, anything that you could see that you think uh, would be best to avoid uh, for being too technical for the patient. Well, I will tell you that I think, again, halitosis, so that word that I just pronounced for you is defined on the card as bad breath. And you would imagine that your client would speak about the issue using this lay term bad breath, um, in which case it's best for you to use the term yourself. Uh, perhaps when you're making recommendations a little bit later in the card for a dental checkup, you might mention that it is a recognized condition rather than just a symptom. But in other parts of the role play, you could probably avoid the technical term and just use bad breath to be most familiar for the patient. And lastly, as I mentioned, thinking about timing and just to reiterate, there are no marks added for completing all of the tasks. What you are expected to do is manage the conversation as you would in real life, which means starting the conversation and moving it forward from topic to topic when you feel it has been sufficiently explored by you and the patient. And it can be helpful to assign each task a rough time in your mind of how long you think it will take to complete during your preparation time. So you know which tasks uh, you want to spend a bit longer on or which ones you can move more quickly through. Um, so in this card, I'm going to suggest that uh, tasks one to four are quite straightforward to complete, but task five is going to take a little bit more time. It also allows you the opportunity to demonstrate a wider range of language skills in handling the client's requests and needing to persuade them that your recommended approach is the best one for their health. So it will be good to manage your time to get through the other tasks fairly quickly and leave yourself some time for task five. So let's move into listening to some actual candidates having a go at this role card. And we re recorded several role plays with candidates ahead of speaking week. So we could use the audio to discuss in these sessions what to do and what to avoid in your speaking test. And the first recording is with Hussain in the UK. And I'm going to play the start of the role play to you. Uh, now, you might find you need to turn up the audio uh, on the device that you're using. Hopefully, uh, the audio will come through clearly. But if you are having any issues, make sure you've got the volume adjusted. Listen to the start of Hussein completing the role play. And then I want you to answer in the chat uh, this question. Do you think the way that he started the role play was appropriate or inappropriate? Uh, for the card as you see it on the screen. So here is Hussein starting the role play. Good morning. My name is Hussein. I'm the pharmacist uh, in duty today. How may I help you? Hi, Hussein. Um, so it's a bit awkward, um, but I have bad breath and I've tried some remedies for it, but they haven't worked. All right. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, can you tell me more uh, what triggers this? Uh, I mean, uh, if, if you just elaborate about that. Um, so what do you think? Um, was that an appropriate way of starting the role play or inappropriate? Um, let me know in the chat if you were listening in. Uh, you heard Hussein start the role play. Do you think it was appropriate or inappropriate?
All right. Uh, Sporty Kids from YouTube is saying that was appropriate. Thank you for submitting your opinion. Anybody else wanting to comment? Rima on Facebook says it was okay. Great. All right. So, yes, I think the introduction was appropriate. It's quite short. And perhaps the pharmacist could have confirmed the client's name after expressing empathy for their reason for visiting. But the open question inviting the client to explain more about the situation in their own words is appropriate. So to start the role play strongly and score well for relationship building as a tip, it might help you to write down the language you plan to use to start the conversation during your preparation time so you get going confidently and clearly. All right, thinking about task two, we're going to listen to Hussein again, and this time the task is to find out more details about the client's halitosis. And I want you to listen and then tell me what is the pharmacist trying to do here? <coughs> Excuse me. And you can choose A, B or C to enter into the comments. Um, so A is the pharmacist is trying to show empathy. B is the pharmacist is trying to summarize the situation. And C, uh, the pharmacist is trying to clarify a misunderstanding. All things that the assessor might score you on during your role play. So listen and then answer A, B or C in the comments. Have you tried any uh, treatment, any medication before? Um, I've tried a few things. So I've tried um, breath mints, I've tried flossing, and I've also tried mouthwash, but none of them have really helped. Oh, I see. So uh, basically, just to uh, uh, recap, you, did, you tried different treatment, but nothing of them helped, right? Correct. All right, so A, B or C, let me know in the chat. Do you think um, it was A, showing empathy, B, summarizing the situation or C, clarifying a misunderstanding? A, B or C? Rima on Facebook is suggesting B, as is Faye and Quankamol, Vian, Loma, everyone is saying B which is great, you're absolutely correct. Um, so the pharmacist is summarizing what the client told him uh, about the ineffectiveness of the treatments she has tried. And this is quite an important point for my tip here. Some candidates mistakenly think that summarizing should only occur at the end of the role play to sum up what has been discussed. And in fact, it's possible to summarize at many points during the conversation, such as in this example. And doing so is a really handy way of making sure the patient feels heard before you move on to more questions or giving your diagnosis or whatever the next task requires you to do. All right, now listen to Hussein completing task three, which is to explore further relevant client details. And this time I want you to score their response on a scale of one to three. So if you think this was a weak response, you'll put one in the chat box. If you think it was okay, it would be a two. If you think it's a strong response, you could give it a three. So thinking about their exploration of further relevant client details, how would you rate their response out of three? Yeah, can you tell me more about your general health? I mean, uh, how do you uh, uh, describe yourself, healthy? Yeah, I'd say I'm generally healthy. Uh, do you um, use any long-term medication? No, none of that. Have you have you regularly go uh, to visit your dentist? Well, probably the last time I went to the dentist was six or seven years ago. Mm. Oh right, I, I see. Uh, is there a reason why you don't 
go regularly to, to check up with your uh, dentist? I just feel very anxious about seeing a dentist. I've never really liked it, so I always delay it, I think. I understand what you're saying. Because most people don't like dentists. This mm -hmm. is a common thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I mean, uh, I know that it's uncomfortable to visit a dentist, but it is very necessary to do a periodic uh, um, uh, checkups, especially with terms of what you are experiencing right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, if, the, if the treatments that you have tried until now uh, wasn't made, any progress, uh, I really uh, prefer if you uh, first will, uh, will go and book an appointment with a dentist. That would mm -hmm. be the first step. Uh, do you agree with that? Good, so thank you. Um, Gigi is coming through on chat that she thought it was a strong response. Yahya, also a strong response. Vian, Saad, also a strong response. And yeah, I would agree with you. The pharmacist did this task very well and is evidencing a number of the assessment criteria. So by asking the client if there's a reason why they don't have regular checkups, the pharmacist is actually picking up on the patient's cue of anxiety and exploring the reason why they haven't been, um, because it's not usual for people to have so long between dental visits. The pharmacist then relates their explanation to the anxiety the patient reveals in their response, normalizing the situation and explaining the benefits. So my tip here would be asking the patient why is a good way to understand and incorporate the patient's perspective and means you are able to make your explanations more personalized to the client's individual set of circumstances. So overall, this was a very confident role play with lots of strengths exhibited in showing empathy, involving the patient's perspective and summarizing. There were, of course, still a few things Hussein could work on to improve, including slips in question accuracy. Occasionally, although we didn't hear it in these extracts, he was asking the client for information that had already been given earlier on in the role play. And there were a few instances of hes hesitancy. But despite these small issues, Hussein would be ready to take his speaking test. Let's listen to a few more examples from another pharmacist now, this time Wala, who was also in the UK preparing for registration with the General Pharmaceutical Council there. And I want you to listen to her completing task two, which is to find out more about the client's halitosis and then I want you to tell me in the chat, what's different between the way Wala responds to the patient the first three times and in her last response. Now, she does speak fairly softly, so you may need to turn up the volume a little bit louder to hear her. Okay, uh, when this problem has started? Um, it, I first noticed it really about five months ago. Okay, is there any, do you think any, possible triggers that may be uh, cause this problem? I've not really any idea what's caused it. I brush my teeth twice a day. I don't have a problem with a dry mouth or anything, so I'm really not sure. Okay. Um, Rebecca, have you tried any type of medication before, any treatment for this problem? Yeah, I've tried a few things because, as I said, it's quite embarrassing, really. So I've tried um, breath mints. I've tried flossing and I've also tried a mouthwash, but none of them have really helped. Oh, no. I, I'm sorry to hear that. I know it is an embarrassed problem mm. uh, for you. I know. Uh, we call this problem, Rebecca, uh, uh, mm. it is, it is, um, it is a, a, a normal thing to happen sometimes. But mm. I want you to, uh, I want to ask you some questions about uh, mm. your health in general. Is it okay for you? All right, so this is a little bit more challenging a question, um, but what you just heard uh, was the pharmacist asking the patient a number of questions. Did you notice anything different in the way the uh, pharmacist responds earlier on in that extract and her last response? See if you can add something into the chat if you noticed anything particular.
let's have a look at it together. So in the first three responses, uh, the pharmacist is focusing on gathering information and just briefly acknowledges the client's answer with OK. But in her final uh, response, uh, she expands further into showing empathy as well as uh, uh, normalising the situation the client is experiencing and checking whether the patient has understood. So a tip here, saying OK is one way of demonstrating active listening during find out tasks. But when used repetitively, as in this example, it can make it sound like a mechanical response. So echoing some of what the patient had said is an effective active listening technique. So as an example um, for this scenario, she could have said, OK, that's good that you brush twice a day. So not just saying the minimum of OK. All right, now listen to the pharmacist completing task four, which is to recommend a dental checkup. And I want you to put yourself in the patient's shoes and then answer this question. How clear is this response for you to understand? And you can give it an A if you think it's very clear, a B if it's quite clear, and C if you don't think it's very clear. I understand you. Yeah, it's sometimes really hard to book this appointment and sit mm -hmm. on the dental chair mm -hmm. to be able to I understand you. But mm -hmm. um, uh, OK, but I will uh, recommend you to book an appointment with the dentist right now. It is really crucial for your uh, teeth health, for your body health as well to mm -hmm. check your dentist. Your uh, your uh, every uh, couple of three months, six months as as, as a doctor, doctor. Not, not more than, than that. that. Um, because there's um, lots of common causes of polyposis um, uh, related to dental hygiene. Um, sometimes uh, tooth decay, uh, or maybe there's a treatment required for you and uh, it is not successful. Uh, so you need to check with your dentist. Uh, what, what is the problem of this, uh, of this bad breath, uh, or what we call a, a habit process? Uh, does it make sense for you, Rebecca? So how do you feel if you were the patient? How clear was that response for you to understand? A, very clear. B, quite clear. C, not very clear. Let me know in the chat. Tatiana is saying C, not very clear. Vian, quite clear, a B. Tiasha saying a C. And I think I would agree with you, Rima, also saying a C. So this response is a little confusing to listen to because of the amount of hesitation sounds, so the ers and the ums. Um, but also the changes to the information. So, for example, in that middle, we've got a few changes from couple to three months to six months for checkup, which is something quite confusing for a patient to hear. They, they're less left feeling, which one is it? I'm not really sure. So remember that OET is not a test of your professional skill, just your English proficiency. So even if you're not very familiar with the topic, the accuracy of the healthcare information you give is not assessed. So saying one of those time frames would have been fine. She didn't need to change it or correct it, perhaps feeling uh, worried that she wasn't giving the correct time frame. Fluency can be impacted by nerves or lack of confidence in the topic. So it's important that you minimize these as much as possible by using the preparation time effectively, using some of those strategies we talked about at the beginning of the session. So let's listen to this pharmacist completing one last part of the card, which is task five, resisting the client's request for treatment. And I want you to let me know if you feel this is an appropriate way 
to complete the task and you can answer yes, no or not sure after you've listened. Okay, um, that would be I'm afraid to tell you there is nothing to give you over the counter. There is no uh, indication uh, for your problem uh, and I can't uh, dispense anything for you. You need to, uh, it is really important to check the, uh, the problem and why you have this problem. Uh, you need to check with the dentist if he needs if the dentist wants to work on some uh, tips for you or if there are any maybe the, the dentist will give you professional cleaning for your whole uh, team and that will help you a lot to get a good break back. What did you think? Is this appropriate way to resist the client's request for treatment? Yes no or not sure let's look at it together um so yes i felt this response was a good example of completing the task there's still some hesitation here but what the pharmacist does well this time is they use some softening language so things like i'm afraid to tell you uh, while remaining firm that the best course of action is a dental checkup. So it's important that you keep your tone professional but friendly. So even when you're challenging the patient about the course of action they would like you to take um, and presenting a different option, you still need to keep that tone friendly and professional. This is a common task, resisting something that the patient wants. Um, for pharmacists. So practice saying no to requests for a particular treatment or saying no to a, a restricted dose treatment if the patient's asking for more of it. Practice doing that with colleagues or friends to feel comfortable about it. So overall, this role play has some aspects that need working on, such as fluency without hesitation, something I can see a few of you picking up in the chat, as well as more variety of active listening responses. But there are some strengths too. Uh, the pharmacist had a friendly approach and included the patient in the conversation. So with some work on these weaknesses, Willa would then be ready to book her speaking test. We're coming towards the end of the pharmacy section, uh, but I have some key points from two other candidates that I want to discuss more briefly uh, to give you some final tips for things to do and things to avoid before we move on to dentistry. So dentists, hang on just a little bit longer. We'll be coming to you very soon. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first uh, quick focus point I want to make is on getting the patient's perspective. So listen to this pharmacist starting the role play. Again, she does it quite quietly, so you may need to turn the volume up a little bit louder. Let me know in the chat if there's anything you would have done differently about starting the role play if you were the pharmacist. My name is Gina. What seems to be bothering you? Uh, hi, Gina. Um, I'm a bit embarrassed to say I have bad breath and I've tried some remedies to fix them, but they haven't worked. Don't worry, can I ask you a few more questions regarding your, regarding your illness? Yes, sure. What, uh, how long have you been suffering from this? Um, the problem started about five months ago. Uh, and uh, anything seems to be um, exaggerating it. All right, let me know in chat, or perhaps we'll just move into looking at it together. Um, there are a few things that I would recommend doing differently. The first would have been to avoid the word bothering, which isn't quite polite enough. Concerned or, um, con sorry, concerning or troubling would have been better alternatives, more polite alternatives. The pharmacist also launches straight into closed questions 
rather than asking the patient to describe the situation in their own words. And when getting the patient's perspective, um, OET roll cards will usually have either as the first or second task, the requirement to find out or explore the situation. So asking the patient to explain in their own words is effective because it can complete the task quite quickly if the patient gives you all the detail that you need, but also because it can help inform any follow-up questions you want to ask, rather than sending you down a line of questions that might turn out to be inappropriate for the patient's situation. The second quick focus I want to talk about is sticking to the roll card. So listen to this extract from another pharmacist, and then we'll talk about what's happening here. So here, again, the pharmacist is finding out more details from the, the patient. What is happening? Have a listen. Okay, you know, um, I should, should tell you how psychosis uh, has different causes. And the most important causes uh, some problems in pain. And maybe sometimes a sore throat uh, is a good cause for this disease. Don't you have any sore throat? No, um, I haven't noticed anything really different. And, uh, I, you know, I haven't got a dry mouth or anything like that. Okay, and sometimes some problems in stomach uh, causes uh, hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes infection uh, in your uh, sinus, in your skull, cause halitosis. And so my suggestion is, if you say you don't have any infection in your feet, if you, you know, it's better for, uh, for first step, go to a dentist to examine your feet. And after that, if all of your feet is, uh, are safe, uh, it's better to check your throat. After that, if everything is okay, it's better to have a uh, radiology from your sinus. You know, um, chronic sinusitis can make halitosis sometimes. And I suggest you, you know, uh, there's another question. Don't you have any headache sometimes? Especially no. on your forehead? No, no, um, nothing like that. All right, so um, Tiasha is saying she's detailing the causes which is not included in the card and not necessary. Excellent pickup. That's exactly what I wanted you to notice. So the pharmacist has gone off topic down lines of questioning and explanation that are not on the task. And while the interlocutor is not following a script, uh, going off topic like this can cause the conversation to break down because the interlocutor may not know how to respond. The pharmacist is having the conversation, perhaps as they would in real life, which is commendable, but the roll cards have been written to ensure candidates have opportunity to demonstrate the assessment criteria that they're going to be scored on. Going off topic may, in fact, reduce your score uh, because demonstrating those assessment criteria was limited. Um, so remember, the card contains all of the information you need to complete the role play. And as another point, make sure your tone of voice and word choices are a good reflection of your professional role and avoid accusatory sounding questions such as these ones in the example, don't you have a headache? Don't you have a sore throat? It sounds a little bit accusing. So one last uh, quick focus um, on pharmacy. And um, this focuses on listening to the patient. So in this final example, listen to the pharmacist, again, exploring relevant client details. And let me know if you think the pharmacist has properly listened to the patient. And you can tell me in the chat if you think it's yes, no, or not sure. No, I'm quite anxious about seeing a dentist. May I recommend you something for your uh, for your medicine? Yes, I I'd really like um, a kind of treatment if you have one. I would like you to go uh, for a dental checkup more often. Mm -hmm. and 
I spoke over the pharmacist there. One of the issues perhaps with there were quite long pauses in that pharmacist responses. Um, but in terms of the question, has the pharmacist properly listened to the patient? It's perhaps easier to see if I show you the script of the conversation. Um, so here, um, just taking my picture off the screen so you can see it more clearly. Um, there is a missed opportunity um, after the patient says they're feeling anxious about seeing a dentist uh, to explore this further to understand why this is so. But also then another opportunity is missed. The patient requests a treatment and instead the pharmacist recommends the thing the patient has just said that they're feeling anxious about without acknowledging that anxiety. So this wasn't a particularly good effort. Um, so the tip here is that you give your client your full attention. Don't use the time they are talking to read your roll card or to think about what you're going to say next. After your patient finishes speaking, pick up what they've said and show some empathy or ask a further question to clarify your understanding and demonstrate you have been listening. All right, we're going to move on to dentistry now. Uh, so if there are any dentists that have been patiently listening to the stream so far, do say hello in the comment box now. It's great to have you here. And if you're a pharmacist, keep listening because some of this content could still be useful for you. And there's going to be a helpful section focusing on asking accurate questions at the end of today's session. So don't go anywhere, um, but do let me know if you are a dentist and you're still here listening live. I'm going to put up on the screen the new roll card for dentistry and we're also going to add to the chat now the the dentistry card as a, a link that you can download for your yourself your own copy and as a reminder of our earlier conversation about how to make the most of the three minutes preparation time let's talk through this card as an example and great to see a couple of dentists saying hello. Hello to Dimitris and hello to Febby. Great uh, for you joining us today. So first of all, uh, look at the setting at the top of the card. And it's most common for dentist settings to be at the dental clinic, but hospital or aged care settings are also a possibility. And you should also be prepared for both routine and more urgent scenarios that might be mentioned in that setting. In this card, the setting, though, is a routine one. It is a private dental clinic. Second, um, we need to also look at the background information. Um, so in this section, we're looking for details of the patient's age and the healthcare reason for the conversation, as well as whether we are speaking to the patient themselves or a relative of the patient. And for this card, the background information tells you that your patient is 57 years old and that you last saw them three weeks ago for a checkup. So that means you know this patient already. <clears throat> Introductions are not going to be necessary. We can also see that for this conversation, you've just examined the patient, which impacts what will make for an appropriate opening to the conversation. The reason the patient has come to see you is that they have chipped a tooth and you are given more details about the location of the tooth that is chipped and how it happened. And finally, the tasks in a bullet point list. And you need to look carefully during your preparation time at the verbs starting each task, which explain the type of communication you will have in each part of the roll card plus the bracketed information which is there to assist you. The tasks on this card for dentists show a balance of briefly gathering information by asking questions about the chipped tooth and the patient's oral hygiene, as well as giving information about the treatment process and encouraging the patient to see a dental hygienist regularly. 
There is a lot of bracketed information on this card, so you might want to underline the main task words, or if you're taking the test on computer, write those words down so you don't lose your place. Remember the information in brackets is often optional, and it's there to back you up if you cannot think what to say. So thinking about uh, the three standard questions I think you always need to ask yourself during your preparation time. Are there any words on the card that you would like defined or pronounced? So just giving you a few seconds to look over the card yourself. Obviously in the chats, let me know if there's anything that you're unfamiliar with. But from my assessment of the card, I think all of the words on this card seem fairly routine dental vocabulary. Of course, if there is anything that you're unfamiliar with during your preparation time, it's always best to ask. Thinking about whether there's any terms used on the card that the patient would not be familiar with. This card, I think there are actually quite a few technical terms. So you can see I've highlighted them on the screen now. I think patients wouldn't be familiar with bonding procedure, adhesive material, or at least not such a formal version of that, as well as scaling, that's quite a technical dental term. Uh, the patient's unlikely to recognize those. So in your preparation time, the point of identifying those technical terms is that when you come to talk about them in that section of the role play, ideally you're going to think of alternative words to describe them to the patient in more lay terms, or if you do decide to use those technical terms, uh, explain them in language that the patient is going to understand. And lastly, thinking about uh, the tasks on the card and how long you think they will take to complete. So my suggestion for this card is that tasks two and three stand out for being the longest task, but also having a number of components to them. So it would be important to briefly complete task one and allow most time for the middle task while also trying to leave a portion of time for tasks four and five that can also be completed fairly quickly. Remembering again, as I've said now a few times, there are no marks added for completing all of the tasks. So it's not essential that you do finish everything, but you are expected to manage the conversation and keep it moving forward from topic to topic when you feel one has been sufficiently explored by yourself and the patient. So we recorded one dental role play with Nicolette in Italy, and we're going to listen to her introduction to the role play. And then I want you to let me know in chat whether you think this was an appropriate start for the roll card. So again, like I was doing earlier in the session, you don't have to be a dentist to be able to listen and answer this question. Whoever's listening in live now, feel free to add your comment to the chat once you've heard the introduction. Hi, Rebecca, nice to meet you. Um, I've heard that uh, you have achieved uh, your tool. Uh, could you tell me more about this? Yes, that's right. So last night I was just eating some walnuts and I heard a crack and uh, a small part of one of my top teeth had broken off. And I've still got that bit of tooth, actually. Okay, uh, so you have the missing part of your tooth. It's, uh, yes. it's fantastic. Okay, um, did you have any pain? All right, so what did you think uh, to that dentist's uh, start to her role play? Let me know in the chat. I'll just allow you uh, 10 or 20 seconds to let me know. Do you think that was appropriate, a, a good way to start the roll card, or do you think that was inappropriate? Uh, Yahya is suggesting it was inappropriate. Aloma is saying appropriate. So we've got 50-50 so far. Does anyone want to be the deciding vote?
All right, Alberta has come through to make it 2-1 for inappropriate. Um, I'd actually say that this was okay. It was appropriate. Um, the approach is still friendly. And uh, sorry, just coming back into the slides. The approach is friendly and um, she's still being professional and sounding very positive about the patient having the missing part of their tooth, which would be reassuring to the patient. Obviously, the thing that I think you're picking up is that she didn't need to say nice to meet you at the start, because as we saw on the roll card, the dentist already knows this patient, they've met them before. If they had omitted uh, that uh, opening, that would have made it almost perfect. So make sure my tip here is to create good rapport with your patient, show positivity where you can, particularly at the beginning, to help the patient relax and to make them feel reassured. So saying something like, thanks for telling me, I can see that must be difficult for you, isn't uh, something that you would use in this role play, but as an example of how you can show positivity after the patient explains their reason for visiting you, that language is a good way of, of showing uh, and getting uh, the, the role play off to a good start. Let's listen to another part of this dentist's role play and this time um, task two, advising need for bonding procedure. And I want you to let me know in the chat which technique the dentist is demonstrating in their second response. Um, so A, is it relationship building? B, is it providing structure? or C, is it information giving? So listen to the dentist giving some advice. Listen specifically to their second response and tell me in the chat whether you think it was A, B or C that they're demonstrating. Did you hear about uh, restoration before? Not really. And to be honest, I still don't understand how I, I chipped my tooth from walnuts. I've eaten them so many times before and this has never happened. Yes, uh, usually it can happen when um, the tooth is already uh, weakened. Mm -hmm. it, it can be by an initial carrier selection. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I will explain you later that uh, you absolutely need to attend the clinic uh, every six months for having this uh, regular checkups. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, let me explain you uh, how the restoration works. What do you think? Um, was the dentist showing A, relationship building, B, providing structure, C, information giving, thinking particularly about uh, the second response? We've got a few different suggestions coming through. Onu and Uloma and Tatiana are all saying C, as is Lisa as well. Tiasha is saying A. In fact, what I was hoping you were going to pick out um, was in their second response, and again, I'm just going to hide my picture because uh, it's covering up the script there. Um, in their second response, um, the, the dentist is providing structure. In their first response, yes, they are definitely demonstrating information giving. So they're finding out what the patient already knows about restoration. But then the patient says they want clarification about how the chip occurred. And the dentist is really attentive here. She provides an answer and then adds the structure that I wanted you to pick up. Um, she structures the role play by saying it will be covered later and bringing the conversation back to the original topic of restoration. So this is a tip. This can happen in your role play. Um, let the patient know that you've heard their question. Um, but if it's not something that you wanted to talk about now, let them know you'll return to it later. This helps them to feel respected as well as relaxed about the direction of the conversation. 
Here's another extract uh, from this dentist, this time from task four, where the patient, uh, sorry, where the dentist is advising the patient on oral hygiene. And this time I want you to think about the uh, response as a whole, their completion of task four. And on a scale of one to three, where one is, street, is weak, two is okay, and three is strong, let me know out of three how you would rate the dentist uh, for completing task four. And I, I brush, you know, twice a day, and I use mouthwash, so I kind of thought that was enough. I don't need to come every six months. And I trust me too? No, I don't find that very easy. Okay, uh, so uh, you're brushing your teeth twice a day. Mm -hmm. uh, you are using a uh, mouthwash, but mm -hmm. you are not flossing. That's right. Okay, you should absolutely introduce uh, in your um, daily routine flossing twice a day. Um, because in the space between uh, one tooth and another, the mm -hmm. toothbrush uh, can reach the plaque. So what did you think on a scale of one to three? How well did the uh, dentist complete that task about advising the patient on oral hygiene? One week, two, okay, or three, strong? All right, Tatiana's there with a positive three, saying it was done strongly. Oloma also, strongly. Lisa and Yahya are going with a two. And I think I would agree with Lisa and Yahya. So I would say I think it's a two. Um, what the uh, dentist does well is summarizes the information the patient gives about their current oral hygiene practice. But she doesn't include enough empathy to show that she's really picked up on the patient's cue that she doesn't find flossing easy. She just continues with saying, well, you need to do flossing. So acknowledge your patient when they share their opinions about something. Um, the concept might be easy for you. Flossing may be really something that you have no difficulty with at all, or it could be something that's really important as a health requirement. But if you're going to get the patient to be compliant, they need to be happy with whatever it is that you're asking them to do. So adding, I know you don't find it easy would have been a good start, um, as well as an offer to help the patient find a better flossing technique. Either or both of those things would have improved this response. So finally, listen to this extract of the dentist outlining the bonding procedure. And I want you to listen carefully this time to uh, the candidate's intelligibility. So let me know which word or words the dentist struggles to pronounce in this extract. So first, uh, you know it's a bonding procedure. So it's very important to isolate your tooth. Of course, you will get uh, an anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, I need to roughly uh, the tooth surface. Then I will applicate an adhesive material and then uh, shaping your tooth to end hardening with ultraviolet light. Um, does it make sense to you? Are there any words that you picked up on in that extract that the, the dentist struggled to pronounce? I'll bring them up on the screen and see if you found the same things. So really here it was anesthesia and adhes adhesive material. Um, and of course, pronunciation in a second language can be a real challenge, especially with vowel sounds which can be quite different to your first language. And we can see the two words the dentist particularly struggled with here. But in general, there were quite a few sounds, um, as well as the way she was making her voice go up in intonation, that were causing a, a bit more strain for the patient to understand. So as a tip 
if pronunciation is something you personally find difficult, uh, build your own list of words that are common to your profession, but perhaps you find difficult to pronounce and work to improve on them in isolation. So as the individual word, as well as together as part of a phrase or sentence, as the pronunciation can be different or more difficult when said as part of a combination of words. And finally, if it's a word you find just really difficult, really impossible to say, consider swapping it for something you can say more clearly. So, for example, the dentist could have said pain relief here instead of anesthesia, and that would have been absolutely fine. So overall, this was a good role play and there were strengths in the natural feel of the conversation, the way that the dentist asked for additional clarification and listened to what the patient said. But before Nicolette books her tests, I think it would be good for her to work on that pronunciation of key dental words for extra clarity and just spend a little bit of time uh, working on how to start the role play, making sure it matches uh, what is given on the role card. So we've now looked at five samples of pharmacists and dentists completing a role play and some strengths and weaknesses among them. And one of the common weaknesses across all of the samples, in fact, across speaking week for all OET professions in general, is accurate questioning techniques. And a successful healthcare consultation has a typical structure of starting with an open question and then moving into closed questions. And you'll be very familiar that most roll cards will include at least one task which will get you to demonstrate questioning. So it's really important that you work on this. So in the last little section of our session today, we're going to look at some examples of successful and unsuccessful questions for these particular role plays. So first of all, we're thinking about open questions and I've got some examples of them on the screen now. And I want to see if we can match the questions to the correct column, perhaps uh, I'll let you know, uh, just to make this a little bit easier, there's one example on the screen now that is an unsuccessful attempt at an open question. Can you tell me in the chat the number of that question that is unsuccessful as an open question? Question four, excellent, yes, there come the answers. So question four is an unsuccessful attempt. Um, it sounds quite impolite, and in fact would just be better phrased as how can I help you? Even changing what seems to be concerning you um, uh, is, is only slightly better. How can I help you is quite okay as an open question. Here are some examples of successful closed questions which were asked by our candidates. Uh, but there were still some slips in these questions that uh, could be corrected. And I'm putting up those corrections on the screen now for you to see. So uh, may I ask you, when was your last checkup at the dentist? At would be the correct preposition. And do you use any long term medication? So present simple for uh, facts or repeated information. And in terms of. Um, uh, sorry, in terms of uh, unsuccessful questions um, in information gathering, which is where questioning is focused, um, there are there is a descriptor which talks about avoiding uh, leading or compound questions and i wonder if you can identify of these two which one is the leading question and which one is the compound question And I'll pop it up onto the screen now. So the first one 
is an example of a compound question. So a compound question is where you ask the patient more than one question at a time. So here the, um, the pharmacist was asking, um, do you do teeth healthcare regularly? Are you using a toothbrush? Are you using a mouthwash? So that's a compound question. And they're quite confusing for the patient to know where to start with answering. And the second one is what we call a leading question. Don't you have any headache? Uh, leading questions put ideas into the patient's mind that perhaps they wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And again, should be avoided. Using either open or closed questions is preferred. So let's see if we can turn these two questions into successful closed questions. I'm going to show you on the screen how we can do that. So the first question could become successful by just asking, do you brush your teeth regularly? If you want to follow up by asking about mouthwash, do it after the patient has responded to this question. And instead of the second question, the leading question, you could simply ask, have you had any other symptoms? And let the patient tell you in their own words uh, about any other symptoms like headache that they have had. All right, that brings us really to the end of the session. Um, I, I know there's a couple of points that have come through as questions um, during the session now, but if you would like to ask a specific question about something that has come up in today's uh, session, pop it into uh, the chat box now, and I'll just answer a couple of questions that we spotted a little bit earlier. Um, so Zul was asking, I think during the pharmacy uh, session, what about other reassurance phrases and empathy phrases other than, I am so sorry, let me reassure you, um, I understand your concerns. Uh, what will be other language uh, that you can say so you're not just repeating this? Um, so in terms of empathy, sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one way of doing this is to echo um, what the patient has uh, said to you. And we heard um, Hussein, the dentist at the beginning, doing that. He said, uh, I understand uh, it's difficult um, to go to the dentist. Or he normalized it by saying, many people don't like going to visit the dentist. And apologies to the dentists that are here in the session tonight. I'm sure you're all wonderful dentists to visit, but it is a common uh, anxiety somehow that lots of patients have. They don't like visiting the dentist. So certainly echoing language, something that the patient has said, you can pick up on that. Um, another example, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you could say, thank you for telling me that. Uh, I can see that must be difficult for you. Um, or in that example with the flossing, I mentioned saying, um, uh, I, I understand you don't find that very easy. Um, so there are different ways that you can do it, but generally a good way to show empathy is to pick up on something that the patient has just said and repeat part of it back to them. Um, so thank you for that question. I'll just check if uh, anything else has come through, but it seems not, which is fine. It's great that um, you felt happy with uh, what we have discussed today. Um, so I would like to ask you a question, and that is to find out from you whether you felt you learned something useful from today's session. I do hope so. Uh, let me know in the chat um, or in the, um, uh, the social media responses. Give me a thumbs up um, or uh, let me know in the chat if you thought um, you found out something useful, something that you can apply um, to your practice going forwards. That's great. Thanks, Tiasha. I'm glad you enjoyed the session. And to TG, Gigi, sorry, as well. Um, so I'll just let um, some more responses come through by letting you know um, that to look out 
for the new roll cards, as I mentioned, that are going to be available on the OET website at the start of next week. You can obviously download them if you're a pharmacist or a dentist uh, from the chat in um, the today's session. Also look out for the ultimate guide to speaking, which is coming very soon. If you've already enjoyed our ultimate writing guide, you will know that that contains lots of tips and support to help you demonstrate what the assessors are looking for. And we're very soon to launch our ultimate guide to speaking as well. And we'll definitely get that up on social media when it's available for you to download. For now, uh, we're adding the link to the assessment criteria. We always recommend that you make uh, the most of understanding what the assessors are using to score your speaking. And if you haven't already bookmarked your copy or downloaded or printed, whatever you prefer to do, do make sure you grab that from the, the chat now. The link is there for you to get your own copy. And when you're trying out the roll card in the near future, the one that we've looked at today, when you try it out for yourself, make sure you record the conversation um, so that you can uh, listen back to yourself, reflect on your strengths and weaknesses against the criteria the assessors are using to score your speaking. Thank you to everyone joining me today for the compliments that I've seen coming through on chat. It's been lovely leading this session and I look forward to coming back every day this week for more of these sessions with all of our OET professions. So perhaps I'll be seeing you again at one of those sessions very soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now.